Please proceed, Your Worship. Thank you, Randy. Uh, welcome, everybody. It's on or about 6.30. I'm here in the Municipal Hall and Council Chambers. Uh, other members of Council are uh, in their home offices or in their homes uh, on, a, on a Zoom platform. Uh, we have uh, staff either in their offices or in their home offices, and we are also joined by Trina Connell from BDO, uh, the audit firm who helped us out again this year with uh, the municipality's audit. I, will, I don't know if I said this, but I will call this meeting to order. And I'll start with a motion um, that council amend the August 17th, 2020 council meeting agenda to include correspondence from Bram Gillen, Gillen regarding a parking matter on Chapel Street under roundtable discussion section 8.2, correspondence items received. Do I have a mover, please? That's moved by Councillor Bateman. Seconded by Councillor Rowley. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, will you please call the vote? <laughs> Councillor Ron Anderson. Yes. yes. Councillor Mark Bateman. Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc. Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley. Yes. Uh, Mary's not in. Absent. Deputy Mayor is absent. So it's carried. I, I get a vote to the count. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. And there are Brian Ostrander. Yes. Thank you. And the next motion will be the council approve the August 17th, 2020 council meeting agenda as amended. Is there a mover? Councillor Rowley, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc. Is there any discussion? Please unmute your microphones. Candace, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson. Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman. Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc. Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley. Yes. Mary and Laura are absent. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. Carried. Thank you. And members of council, do you have any declarations of pecuniary interest? And if so, please state the general nature thereof. There are none noted. And I'll ask if you have any announcements this evening. Councillor Bateman. If I could, I was just going to ask you a quick question. And then I'm going to ask you. I noticed, uh, I don't think we've done it on the previous. Did we not uh, approve the previous meeting minutes when we're on? I don't know if that's changed for the Zoom meetings. Or... Madam Clerk. The previous minutes? Yeah, yeah. Because typically in the past, we always approve the previous meetings. Not on this agenda. Remember when we did this, made this agenda, it was for a special meeting through this declaration. We will do all of the approval of the minutes when we go in September to regular okay. council. Okay. And I, if I could, uh, may I, the quick announcement is nothing to happen in the community. I just want to let everybody know that Councillor Blanc is definitely afraid of bats. And if anybody wants to know the underlying story on that, please give me a call. <laughs> Doug, if you want to speak to that, go ahead. We're not doing. We're not doing that, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know later, man. We're not doing that. <laughs> Anybody, please feel free to call either Councillor Bateman or LeBlanc if you want to find out about the bat. <laughs> Are there any other announcements this evening? There are none noted. We move straight into staff reports. Our first report is with regard to the COVID nineteen expenses to date. Um, <clears throat> Director Whittafield, we've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? No, I do not. Thank you. I have a motion that Council receive staff report regarding the COVID-19 expenses to date report as information. Is there a mover? 
Councillor Anderson, is there a seconder? Councillor Bateman? Is there any discussion? Councillor Bateman? I just had one question for either uh, the finance director, the CAO, or yourself. Uh, when you read the, the last page of the, it says the other expenditures are 17560 are unbudgeted. Well, and it said it might create a deficit, but with the announcement of 300000 plus from the Fed and the provincial government, will that, can that not be offset by that money? I suspect the answer is yes, but I'd ask the director to confirm that, please. Yes, so that announcement came out last week um, that Brighton is entitled to um, just over three hundred thousand dollars, and so we will be applying for that or applying that money towards any of our COVID expenses. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Are there any other questions or comments, Councillor Anderson? Uh, I just noticed um, the, uh, uh, wages sixty-five thousand dollars. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Or, uh, it's sort of all. I suspect it's primarily reallocating the chief's uh, role in all of this to salaries. But Director Whitfield, could you please speak to that? There were some expenses related to hourly employees, but um, a majority of it belongs to the fire hall. Does that answer your question, Councillor Anderson? Thank you. Thank you. Councillor LeBlanc? Councillor Anderson asked my question. I got my answer. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Councillor Rowley? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, to Linda, um, just because it came up that uh, uh, the province will be giving us a chunk of money to help offset some of these costs. There was also money being allocated for uh, transportation, public transit. And I read where we were, we are not receiving any of any, were we, um, were we given a letter or any explanation as to why Brighton uh, is not getting that? Um, no, we were not, but I would just, if I could assume it was that we don't have our, an official transit system in Brighton. Could I ask another one? I just wondered, as as in previous times, we've always worked with uh, Quinty Access, and we've always. Uh, I would wonder if some of that, you know, under under other riderships with uh, other municipalities, uh, like maybe Prince Edward County, they received stuff, and I thought that would just come under the Quinty Access as well, but not in this case. It would it would certainly appear not. We, as you note, uh, receive no monies for transit. Right. I would certainly be happy to uh, reach out to the MPP and just make note that we do partner with uh, Quinney West and Quinney Access for our transit service and see if there's any uh, any money that we can shake loose for that purpose. Right. Um, and if, given, if not, yeah. yeah given, given that our transit authority is located in another municipality um, and that our ridership is pretty slim at the best of times, we may have difficulty getting a, a, few, a few extra dollars, but I'm I'm happy to reach out. I have no problem with that at all. Just just asking. Thank you for that. You bet. Any other questions or comments from members of council? Councillor Anderson. Not a question, but I understand this is just the first uh, first installment, first phase of uh, of uh, more to come. So uh, we need to. Uh, have our ducks in a row and be ready for that as well. Am I correct, uh, correct with that? Director Witterfield, would you like to speak to that? The monies that we're being provided is, is to help us offset um, the costs for all of the COVID expenses, not only this year, but we carry it forward to next year as well. Um, so the additional expenses for the building changes, et cetera, will, will come from that money as well. And Councillor Anderson, um, to, your, to your point, there is an additional set of monies available, but my understanding is that you would have to show that you've exceeded the amount they've given you, and then it would be on an application basis. So 
we would have to expend the three hundred and almost twenty seven thousand uh, dollars and then show have to show above and beyond that to the province what we've spent and apply for money <clears throat> beyond that. Um, my it's in the five hundred million dollar range I think if, I, if I'm remembering the letter correctly and uh, my suspicion is those those monies will get gobbled up by the larger communities fairly quickly um, over time but uh, and and to be frank the 326 is uh, I think going to be favorable for us uh, through this year and next so um, with any with any luck as we and with uh, good money management we'll be able to uh, get through this reasonably well Councillor Rowley thank you uh, Linda once again at some point will we get a more uh, detailed um, list of how monies were spent I know you said there's been monies that needed to be spent in the buildings uh, reallocating offices and things. At some point, will we get will we get uh, a detailed report on that? We could provide that at the third quarter as well, um, and then perhaps we can we can look into budget time as well to let you know what was spent last year and what we have left in the reserve. Thank you. Anything else, members of council? Madam Clerk, will you please call the vote? Members of council, will you please unmute yourselves? Councillor Ron Anderson. Uh, yes. Councillor Mark Bateman. Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc. Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley. Yes. Mary. <clears throat> Councillor Tabman and Laura W. Laura Vink absent. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. It's carried. Thank you. Our next report is with regard to also from the finance report department with regard to the 2020 development charges indexing report. Director Whittefield, we've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? No, I do not. Thank you. The motion reads that council received staff report regarding the 2020 development charges indexing and further that council authorizes staff to increase schedule C to bylaw 089 2019 by 2.6% in accordance with the Statistics Canada quarterly non-residential building construction price statistics, table 18-10-0135-01 second quarter. Is there a mover? Moved by Councillor LeBlanc and seconded by Councillor Anderson. Questions or comments? Members of Council. None being shown. Members of Council, please unmute yourself. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson. Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman. Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc. Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley. Yes. Councillor Tadman and Deputy Mayor Laura Vink absent. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. Carried. Thank you. Our next report also from the finance department, the 2019 financial state report. Um, Director Whittefield, we've read your report. Uh, is it the intent that uh, the auditor would go through the PDF document? Was that a yes? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, Ms. Connell, uh, you have the PDF document uh, in front of you. Do you, if I, if I, sh if I make you a co-host, do you want to share that? I can share my screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, Randy, how do I do this? Randy, if you're um, there, can you give I me think... a hand. Uh, she should be a co-host now. Okay. She should be. Yep. Ms. Connell, looks like you're a co-host now. Yep. Uh, just one second. I'll get it pulled up here. Can everybody see the screen? Ah, there it is. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> I have to. Okay. 
So I will start. So thank you everybody for having us here tonight. Um, so I'm gonna go through the presentation and uh, present your audited financial statements for you. Um, okay. So our independent auditor's report as uh, it normally is. It first of all states the responsibilities of management and those charged with governance. Uh, so your responsibility is to prepare and the fair presentation of the financial statements in, in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards. Uh, you want to ensure their in your internal control is there necessary to pre enable preparation of the financial statements that are free from material in the statement. You assess matters relating to going concern and the use of the going concern basis of accounting. And those charged with governance are responsible for overseeing the financial reporting process. Um, our responsibility as auditors is to obtain reasonable assurance that whether the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatements, whether due to fraud or error, to issue an auditor's report that includes our opinion to conduct the audit under Canadian general accepted audit standards, to identify and assess the risks of material in the statement, to design and perform audit procedures responsive to those risks, to obtain audit evidence that is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis of our opinion, to evaluate, evaluate the appropriateness of, our, of the accounting policies, the reasonableness of management's accounting estimates, and the presentation of the financial statements and the disclosures. So our audit opinion this year uh, is a clean audit opinion as it has been in the past years. Um, there is an additional paragraph this year, um, which is called the emphasis of matters. Um, and this is a result as uh, there was an error found in relation to the treatment of the industrial land um, in your records. So basically um, the industrial land has been moved or a portion has been moved from uh, your tangible capital assets to assets held for sale as uh, they are intended to be sold and not to be used for uh, prov providing services to the municipality. Um, so this did result in um, restatements of 2018 and your 2017 um, uh, or your 2018 opening surplus. Uh, so basically what we did is we moved um, the land um, and items that have been added to the land to the assets held for sale. Any of your infrastructure um, that was added to it and is in use was left in TCA, but it was moved to in use. So then there was amortization that had to be recorded to that uh, also. Um, so, and then um, with this new allocation, the prior year's gain um, was uh, adjusted. So there was a change and it's all laid out there for you. Um, so I'm happy to go through that if anybody has any questions on that um, at the end of the presentation. Uh, moving forward um, to the consolidated statement of financial position. So we're starting with our financial assets. We're at $14,417,000. And these financial assets are assets that you can use to provide resources and discharge your existing liabilities. Uh, these assets consist of cash, taxes, receivables, accounts receivables, and the inventory for resale. Uh, your total assets increased $3.8 million or 36% from the 2018 figures. Uh, and the main uh, contributing factor was that there was a lot of cash held at year end. Uh, the cash at year end was predominantly, um, it increased predominantly because you received um, long-term debt uh, in December uh, to fund the prior, to fund renovations of 35 Alice and Dundas. Um, the other item on here, which uh, is new is the, um, assets held for sale, which uh, went, we adjusted for 311 and then it increased to $394,000 this year. And those ads were um, adding the hydro services um, to the lots that have not yet been sold. Your taxes receivables decreased $193,000 in the year. And there was a focus on collections uh, in the fourth, last quarter of the year. And your accounts receivables were relatively stable. Um, there was only a change of about $23,000 year over year. Moving down the page uh, to your net debt, the net bet debt is $2.5 million. Um, this year, your uh, liabilities have increased $4 million or 38%. Um, in your accounts payable, uh, there was a six, 
$661,000 increase. The most significant portion of this increase were developers' deposits that had been received throughout the year. Um, the net amount was approximately $529,000. And the remaining portion um, was just normal uh, timing differences on payables. Uh, moving down, your deferred revenues, um, your obligatory funds were relatively stable, and your other um, deferred revenue, uh, it was the deferral of the OCIF funding um, that caused that $207,000 increase. Um, as I previously mentioned, uh, your municipal debt did increase this year as there's a 3 point uh, $5 million of financing obtained. The net change is 3.1, and that was the difference between your um, regular payments and the new debt obtained. Uh, so overall, the net debt uh, for the municipality at the end of the year was $2.5 million, and this is an increase of about $227,000 um, from the prior year. Okay. So moving down to the non-financial uh, assets, they're at $76 million at $55,535. Um, so these non-financial assets are normally used to deliver services uh, to the community. Uh, they mainly are your tangible capital assets and inventories of supplies. Uh, during the year, your capital outlays amounted to $5.64 million, um, plus you had an additional $1.2 million of contributed assets. Uh, the main capital outlays this year was the renovation of the administration building and the Bright Health Services Center, constructions in progress of various roads. Uh, there was a new grader, loader and plows out added, and there was an assumption of four roads and two storm ponds in the year. Okay, so moving on to your statement of operations. Um, just let me, just trying to get it so you can see it all on the screen. Okay, so there's uh, the two charts which shows the composition of um, operations throughout the year. Um, you will see that the green one uh, taxation is approximately 51% of your revenues this year. Um, it is up from last year. The main change um, this year is that you did not have as many contributed um, assets as you did in prior years. So really all your revenues did increase with the exception of contributed assets in the year. Um, so overall, you saw an increase of revenue. No. Sorry, I'm on the wrong page here. <laughs> you saw a decrease of revenue um, in the year, but it is uh, as a result of the contributed surpluses. And moving down, uh, here's your five-year expense analysis by department. Um, going through, uh, so your many items were relatively stable throughout the year. Throughout the year, um, your general government, um, they most were relatively the same. There was an additional a decrease in costs this year, as last year had um, additional contract staff. There was election costs last year, and uh, there was additional legal fees for the MOE issue last year. Uh, protection is. Uh, very similar once again, um, and it is a, any increase as a result of um, salaries. Transportation, you did see a jump here in the transportation uh, department, and uh, the expenses were high due to additional road maintenance that was uh, done in 2019. Um, so there was more wage and material costs uh, put into that. Uh, you did have an additional um, equipment acquisitions, uh, the greater loader plows and vehicles to assist this. So this resulted in additional amortization expense. And there was additional winter maintenance expenses uh, during um, 2019 due to the snowfall. So again, those costs were um, had. Um, environmental, um, they're back down to really where they were uh, a few years ago last year, um, did have additional um, costs due to the accrual for the MOE. Um, health expenses, they're way down here and they're very consistent year over year. Uh, recreational, uh, the main increase, there's a small increase, but a lot of it is additional overhead related to the uh, library's expanded space. And then planning expenses, 
Um, you did see an increase this year. Um, throughout the year, there was a vacancy in, as a plan in the planning manager's position. So consultants were used more uh, this year than in prior years. Um, this is obviously offset by a decline in the wages and uh, there was also fewer OMB hearings. Uh, so overall, the expenses for 2019 were $15,533,000. Dollars, uh, which was an increase of approximately 225,000 from prior years. Okay, so moving to the key, some key performance indicators. Um, this chart is showing overall revenue and expenditures as well as the annual uh, surplus, uh, just in a, a chart format. So as you can see, revenue uh, down slightly uh, this year, but it is still, um, it's very similar to last year and it's still an increase from going back to 2015. Expenses, again, um, small increase in that and your surplus, you did have a, a surplus this year. Uh, this chart here shows the available cash. Um, that is available for uh, the municipality to use. So what we do is uh, we take your annual, annual surplus and uh, increase the amortization. Uh, and then we compare it to your uh, assets that you have added throughout the year. So what this is showing is that uh, there is sufficient surplus to cover the cost of the additions throughout the year. And the comparison of your net financial assets and debt and the surplus. Um, so you will see that um, net assets and debt, um, you've been uh, steadily increasing. There was a slight decrease uh, this year. Uh, municipal debt, that's the blue one. Um, so as I discussed earlier that you did um, take out additional funding this year to fund the municipal expansion and the Brighton Health Services and the Alice and Dundas projects. And then overall, your annual surplus deficit. Um, oh, here we are here, the annual surplus deficit. Um, it did fall slightly. Um, so the remaining of the financial statements are um, the financial, are all the notes, and uh, they tie back to your financial statements. Um, so they highlight various aspects and give you details of each individual number. So now I'm happy to take uh, questions um, from anybody um, on the financial statements or the presentation. And do... Thank you, Ms. Connell. First, I'm going to get a motion on the floor and then I'll open the floor for uh, questions and comments, but uh, I'm trying to get, there we go. Just wanted to switch my screen around there, thank you. So the motion will read that council approves the 2019 audited financial statements as presented by BDO chartered accountants and authorizes the mayor and deputy mayor to sign the consolidated statement of financial position on behalf of council. Is there a mover? Moved by councillor Bateman, seconded by councillor Rowley. And I'll open the floor to members of council for comments or questions. Seeing, oh, Councillor LeBlanc. Uh, on your deficit, uh, through you, Chair, uh, on the uh, deficit surplus, I noticed that there was quite a bit of carryover from uh, into 2019 from 2018. Is that a normal practice that happens from time to time with, uh, with uh, different councils? Sorry, are you referring to the graph? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, the $3.2 million is what you're referring to. That's how you've spent the money in the year. So because you received a lot of uh, contributed assets this year, there was a surplus showing up. Um, so they do fluctuate depending upon the activities of the council throughout the year um, is really what that is. Um, also with uh, public sector accounting, um, the matching principle doesn't always, doesn't apply too much anymore. So what you're used to, <laughs> uh, you will see highs and lows um, with surpluses because at times you have to bring all the revenue in um, 
regardless of when it's been used. Um, so there is different fluctuations on the accounting treatments. So um, yes, I absolutely, we've seen that um, surplus in others um, and others, we see it the other way too. <laughs> yes. yeah. Could I have one more yeah. Could I have one more question? Go ahead. When, when we look at like a normal business and Brighton is a business or gets a tax deduction, uh, when we buy vehicles, do we get the normal tax deduction on reducing those vehicles that they reduce in cost like you do with a normal business? Okay, so you have amortization, which is showing um, in each category and your assets are split. Um, depending upon the um, departments they are in. So amortization is for sure within um, these financial statements. Um, you don't pay tax, so you don't actually get a tax deduction. <laughs> so. Okay. <laughs> Say thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments from members of council? Ms. Connell, I see that uh, Nick Corsi is here from BDO as well. Uh, Nick, I didn't introduce you at the beginning of the meeting. So um, uh, members of council and the public, Nick Corsi also from BDO uh, for this presentation. Welcome, Nick. Hey, everybody. Uh, so one last time, any questions, further questions, members of council? So members of council, please unmute yourself. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Mary Cabin and Laura absent. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. It's carried. Thank you. Our next report comes from Public Works and Environment. Department uh, with regard to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. There we go. Uh, Mr. Poole, I've just muted you, but you can unmute yourself. Um, we've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight here? Uh, no, Your Worship. Thank you. The motion will read the council received the staff report regarding the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Municipal Asset Management Program. And further, the council directs staff to apply for a grant opportunity with the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Municipal Asset Management Program for funding to be committed to completion of a comprehensive asset management plan, update and acquisition and implement, implementation of an asset management software solution. Be it further recommended that council commits to meeting the financial obligations of the MAMP program from the asset management planning and software allocation item contained within the 2020 GIS budget a maximum of $170,000. Is there a mover? Moved by Councillor Rowley, seconded by Councillor Bateman, and I will open the floor for questions or comments. Members of Council? Councillor LeBlanc. Yes, through you, Chair, for uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Poole. Um, was we applied for something and or joint venture with Northumberland County for GIS. Is this a similar program or part of the same program? Uh, it is, it's a different program. What we entered into with the county was a an agreement to share in a licensing of our GIS software. This uh, application for funding would go towards the acquisition of services to update our asset management plan, as well as acquire software uh, for asset management, both of which we've uh, had budgeted this year. Thank you, Mr. Poole, any other questions? No, uh, Councilor Rowley. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Scott, just reading the 73.5, is that an, is that something that we haven't budgeted for, for the um, for the software maintenance? Is that something that we'll uh, have to look into for next year, or is that included in all of this now? Uh, that uh, I don't have the report in front of me, but um, that's that was budgeted for next year. Okay. Yes, so not in this year, but next year. 
but okay. Okay, thank you. Any further questions, members of council? So Mr. Poole, if I'm reading the tea leaves correctly, if we were to get this grant, uh, that would help with the purchase of the software program, but then council would be essentially committing to a $73,500 operational item for um, maintenance fees? Uh, no, that would just essentially cut our costs this year for what we had already budgeted. Uh, the 73 plus, is just something we're projecting for next year. It's just for information purposes. So what what is the projection then? What is I, I guess I'm doubling down on Council Rowley's question. What is the seventy three thousand five hundred dollars in in the line item here? It says for software maintenance fees and data implementation for twenty twenty one. Yeah. Yes. It is, it is advancing the, the use of this software. Um, acquiring and integrating data into the software for which we are applying for. So yeah, in a sense, it is committing to, to future monies, but it's also something that you don't have to do. Okay, so we, we wouldn't have to pay the maintenance fee. We could go it alone and figure it out. Yes. <laughs> Probably not a wise decision, but yes, I get it. <laughs> Councilor Rowley. Thank you. So I, I'm guessing then that that would be a discussion during budget time then for 2021, correct? Yes. Good. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions, Councillor Anderson? You're muted, Ron. There you go. Sorry about that. What's the uh, likelihood of us getting this funding? <laughs> Mr. Poole? <laughs> I, I'm big on funding now because I haven't seen a lot. <laughs> I, I understand what, it's... What, uh, Mr. Poole, go ahead and roll the dice and tell us the answer. Okay. <laughs> um, I understand that it is uh, significant. It's a it's good chance. I, I have no idea uh, how good a chance, but there has been a lot of success from various municipalities for a similar types of requests, so. And, and this isn't uh, an application to another level of government. This is the Federation of Canadian Municipalities of, of uh, although I don't think Brighton is a member, um, it certainly is a, a group that is responsible for uh, a municipal, the municipal level of representation, usually at the federal level across the country. So uh, they do tend to look out for the little guys from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. You never know with a grant application, Councillor Anderson, but we'll. Uh, I think it's worth. I think it's worth the shot. Any other member? Any other questions from members of council? So, members of council, please unmute yourself. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson. Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman. Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Mary and Laura absent. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Our next report is from our Parks and Recreation Department with regard to the Parks and Recreation Facility opening dates. Mr. Miller, we have read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? I'm not at this time. Thank you, sir. The motion will read that council receives a staff report from the director of parks and recreation on timing of the opening of the arena on September 28th and King Edward Park Community Center on September 8th as information. I'll need a mover. Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Rowley. Any questions or comments from members of council? Councillor Bateman. Uh, just a few questions. Uh, Mr. Miller and I talked about this a few times. Uh, seeing how I lead the one group that uses the facility quite a bit. I just had some questions. Uh, this is just received this on the opening and stuff, but I was looking at some of the verbiage deep inside the uh, document. Well, there'll be an opportunity. Uh, I guess this is for Jim that 
I can send a couple executive members down and they'll probably be wise from some of the uh, other bigger user groups because some of the verbiage won't really line up to how I know these groups will need it to line up. Uh, to be specific on some of them, when it talks about the use of the dressing rooms, two per rental group, for that one it's not possible because I know one of the Ontario Human Rights, when they rolled that out, we have to have a dressing room for co-ed, we have to have one for if the ladies want young girls, whatever age, their own, under the gender identity uh, training that we have to put everybody through. We also have to have dressing rooms available for anybody that identifies as non-binary and don't want to be in any of the other dressing rooms. So I just want to make sure that the rules within this aren't hard, fast, and edged in stone because I think some of it needs to be cleaned up just a little bit so that we're not violating anything. Miller, any questions or comments on that? Sure. Um, you know, being a policy, you know, we, we do inherently provide two dressing rooms per group. Uh, as you're aware, we have extra dressing rooms. Uh, we primarily use one of the dressing rooms as a, as a female dressing room, uh, you know, for any, for any girls that are playing on boys teams. Um, and yeah, we, ha we do have extra rooms if required. Um, that would be the simple answer. I assume, Mr. Miller, you and wouldn't have any objection to the user groups coming to speak to you about the policies if uh, if we needed to make some adjustments. Um, no, not at all. That, that's kind of my game plan going forward in another couple of weeks. Once once I sense that the groups are uh, getting their registrations done and whatnot, then I'll I plan on having a an, a, a nice booking meeting, as it were, like I normally do, to go over everything. And that would be an opportunity for those groups to uh, make note of any concerns they have with regard to these policies. Yes, as well as any concerns with ice times or, or what have you. Um, again, uh, looking at all the other uh, municipalities around us, um, the ice, uh, the time that the ice is going in is a moving target. I mean, that, that's the best guess that we can, we can make is, the, is that one that the 28th, I think is going to serve us well. Um, but again, if, if things, you know, uh, go south, we can always move it, move it up. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Any further questions? Councillor LeBlanc? Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Miller, if this is, there's still some more writing and more meetings to have, do you think we should defer this until the meetings are done and it comes back complete? Uh, not at this time, because again, um, it takes us a couple of weeks this time of year to put the ice in, so I need that much lead time. And I think the groups themselves need to have a target date in order to get, get there. Um, okay. I think we're in fairly good shape compared to other, okay. I, when I look at other places, they're kind of following this same idea. Thank you, Councillor Blanc. Councillor Bateman? Uh, I don't know if I'm on mute. Yes. Uh, with your permission, Mary, is it okay if I set whether it be myself because of my other hat that I wear or somebody from the executive because some of it is to do with the uh and the COVID safety precautions in general that would apply to everybody that uses it like on number four it says the renter must submit a submit a list of all participants to the arena office prior to going on the ice and it states the regular office hours that's one of the areas Jim when you look at it because the regular office hours Monday Friday eight to four and the bulk of our rentals for anybody, regardless of the group is after four weekdays and all day on Saturdays and Sundays. So even that language there would probably need to be cleaned up. But if you're okay with it, I can set from our organization, two people other than myself to go down and Jim and Mr. Miller can reach out to the other groups and try to clean it up so that there's no questions around it. I think what that is for is for groups that have a, a rental, they know who their groups are and they can give, give us a list of who the participants will be at that time. Um, I will like to you know, say that, I mean, these policies are, are not something that I, I, you know, made up. These are policies that I've taken from three or four other municipalities and uh, use that to come up with these. So that one's more for the one-offs like pick up whatever and stuff because you're organized and 
and even even the even even your own association, you would have a, a roster of your different teams. But they're not going to be the same ones that show up on every given day, right? No, but we give us an idea of who's all coming in. You would you would again when your your rental comes on the weekend, I'm sure you would make you know fine tune that list. You'd have to because we we sign in. You would sign in. I'm, I'm going to ask that this this yeah, conversation be yeah. be taken aside because I think we're getting into a maybe a yeah. minor hockey parks and rec conversation that um, can be taken um, to another to another point of discussion. And I'm sure Mr. Miller would be open to having those discussions with any of our user groups. Any further questions from members of council? Members of council, please unmute yourself. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councilor Ron Anderson. Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman. Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc. Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley. Yes. Mary and Laura are absent. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. Ms. Carried. Thank you. Our next report is from the clerk's department, bylaw enforcement and public works being a rate of speed bylaw amendment. This was deferred from the July 17th, 2020 council meeting. Uh, the report was prepared by Mr. McGee, but Mr. Parkinson has asked to speak to this report. So Mr. Parkinson, I'll ask if you have anything to add or highlight. Thank you, Your Worship, uh, to council. Uh, the primary objective of this road speed review is public safety. And it's just to ensure that the interactions between the vehicular cyclist and pedestrian traffic traffic is safe. <clears throat> this report with recommendations represents the collective opinion of the municipal staff and they're in accordance with the transportation of Canada guidelines commonly referred to as TACT and uh, with the Highway Traffic Act. So uh, that's all I wanted to say, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parkinson. The motion will read the council receives the report dated August 17th, 2020, being an amendment to the rate of speed bylaw 091-2019 that regulates speed limits on specific municipal roads. And further, the council authorizes the amendment to the rate of speed bylaw schedule A as outlined in attachment three attached here too. Sir Mover. Councilor Rowley. Is there a seconder? Councillor LeBlanc. And I will open the floor for questions or comments. Members of council. Councillor Anderson. You're muted, you're muted, Ron. Thank you. Um, I have a question. I'm a little confused. Uh, the rate of speed bylaw uh, 2019 list the number of uh, streets with speed limits. And then I look over to the uh, where it's been changed. I see certain streets that are like, uh, I'll just use an example, Smith Street in Smithfield uh, is still at 50. Is that, that's from the past, but it, it doesn't show a change that, do we need to, does that, should that be updated now or, or did we already do that? It's just not showing up anymore. And uh, uh, Lisker Street's another street, and I notice other streets still have old speed limits on 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 the uh, rate of speed bylaw 2019. Are you seeing that? I I so am. My as question well. is. So my question is, I see changes, but I don't see changes on some streets. I see old speed limits on. Mr. McGee, do you have a comment on that? Uh, that might have been overlooked. I know when we did the last update to the rate of speed for the community safety zone in Smithfield, we did have the proper um, uh, speed limits on it. I believed it was passed by resolution. Um, I was unable, I wasn't looking when I did this, like the the amendment to the rate of speed by law, I wasn't looking at what was existing. I was looking what we were adding. That's why I provided two different two different uh, charts there 
So that, uh, yeah, I guess if we're gonna, if this is gonna be the amendment, then that should be the, the correct speed. I apologize for that. I figured I grabbed the, the most no, recent. No, just, I, yeah, I wasn't uh, challenging anything. It just, it just didn't, uh, it like, it looked like something was missing, that's all. And, and it, so it, it just looked like we were still, we're going back to the speed limit that we, we, we did change. And so it just needs to be updated, I guess. Everything's looking good and everything's working better, but I just wanted to uh, make sure that we weren't going backwards. So. Oh, no, I no, we're not changing these and kind of <laughs> hiding it. They, okay. they, were just, they were just missed. So yeah, okay, we have to sure when we pass them that they do match what was in that resolution uh, back when we created the Smithfield Community Safety Zone. Okay, thank you very much. 40 zone, correct? That's correct. Um, it, is it is it best to come forward with a, um, a changes again, or I, mean, I, I guess I I'm reticent to defer this. There are some roads on here that we need to decrease the speeds on. Um, I'm, I'm thinking specifically of Georgina Street and the letter we've received to to do that. Mr. Parkinson, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I would recommend that we move ahead and approve uh, this report and the recommendations. And then, cause this is only phase one of a few phases. So the next phase that we can do, we can catch those other corrections that Councillor Anderson mentioned, and then we can just keep moving forward from there. Thank you. If everybody agrees. Thank you. And we, we did defer this from another meeting and I specifically asked members of council to be in touch with staff on anything they they had objections to so i do hope that that happened councillor rowley thank you I, I guess that's my question excuse me from the last meeting i know there were some concerns that we had um i didn't see a whole lot of changes this time from um the meeting that we had in july so we're uh just wondering did you did you receive concerns from council and were those changes then um considered mr parkinson I didn't receive uh, comments or questions from anyone regarding this report. Uh, perhaps Alan has, but I didn't receive any comments or phone calls or emails or anything uh, regarding the speeds or any issues. Mr. McGee, did you? Um, I did not receive uh, any questions or comments from council regarding uh, what the issues were with the report last council meeting. Super, thanks. Councillor Anderson? Well, just just to uh, confirm what was being said, uh, the reason why we held this over was because uh, a couple of councillors wanted to defer it because they felt it took a long time to drive across, across town. So um, unfortunately, they couldn't be here tonight to hear from them, but uh, I think we can move ahead though. Um, everybody's here that uh, can make a decision on this and, and move ahead and if it can be updated later that's that's great go ahead <laughs> thank you council leblanc at the last council meeting through you chair the two councillors that wanted to, uh the two councillors that wanted to defer aren't here tonight that had their comments and their stuff uh, to be heard my question is on lost and settlement road uh, the new two, is it three or four sixty uh, kilometer an hour signs? Are they brand new? Or have they just been put in? And if we're putting in new signs, can we make sure that they're not hidden by trees? That, that <clears throat> sounds more like a, uh, a suggestion than a question. So I'm sure uh, Mr. Parkinson will take that under advisement. <laughs> not a bad suggestion, though, Councillor LeBlanc. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah, and to the to the point that a couple of members of council um, asked for this deferral, and of course it went through. Um, I would point out we've had a month now to offer our suggestions, if that's what we wanted to do, to members of staff so they could write an appropriate report. And here we are uh, revisiting the same report that we've deferred from a month ago. So uh, I'm just going to move on unless there's any further questions with regard to the report, Councillor Bateman. You're on mute, Mark. I was in favor of this at the last meeting before we deferred it, and I still am because I think we've all, unless we've been living under a rock, have heard all the complaints about the speeding on numerous streets. 
I think this will slow people down, but because we've lowered the speed limit and by default, they're, they're gonna speed, they're just gonna be going slower than they did before without increased enforcement. And we know that increased enforcement comes with increased costs. What are the cost aspect, not the enforcement part? Will that be coming at a later date? Because changing all these road signs, there's gonna be a, a dollar amount to that too, correct? So we'll get that at some point on what it's gonna to cost to update all our road signs, so the speed limit signs, sorry. It's in here. Parkinson, can you address that question, please? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the estimated cost for this phase is about $4,000 but we reuse or recycle signs every chance we can. So hopefully we can reduce that a little bit, uh, but that right now that's our best estimate. Is that $4,000 within uh, one of your budgets, Mr. Parkinson? <laughs> well, it'll have to be. Um, if we go over on our sign budget, we'll just try to save elsewhere. But uh, you know, we have to be in compliance with signage. There is no uh, gray area there. So um, we will accommodate this in the existing budget one way or the other. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Councillor Bateman, does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, no, this is needed. So whatever the cost, we're going to have to pay, but we have to pay for the cost for the parking down at yeah. the other place. And this is a no brainer. We need to slow people down. So agreed. Any further questions from members of council? Councillors, please unmute yourself. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson. Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman. Councillor Doug LeBlanc. Great start, yes. <laughs> Councillor Emily Rowley. Yes. Mary and Laura absent. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. That's carried. Thank you. we we'll move to motions and notices of motion. And I think these are all motions from the July 17th meeting. The first one is moved by Mayor Ostrander, seconded by Councillor Anderson. Whereas the community has expressed interest in purchasing products with the municipal logo crests and images. And whereas the municipality has a policy that restricts the use of municipal logos, crests and images on products. Now therefore be it resolved that council direct staff to provide a report to revise policies that restrict the use of municipal logos, crests and images in order to provide products and flags for sale to the public and further that staff ensure that any revisions also protect the brand and identity of the municipality. Is there any discussion? Councillor Bateman, you're muted. I feel like I'm at home. Uh, just a question, uh, if this goes ahead, that wasn't a shot at my wife, please don't phone her. Um, where would this, uh, the merchandise be sold? Uh, like, I'm wondering about that, because with the whole COVID stuff, we're trying to, we're going to be opening the municipal building, but we're not going to have an open invitation for just going up there. So are we looking at online sales, that type of stuff, or is that a conversation further down the road? I, I think that's a conversation for further down the road. Right now we're at step one. We're not even allowed to do what, what yeah. you're suggesting. So uh, what we'd like to do is uh, allow staff to uh, revise the current policy. Uh, okay. We may need to look at other policies um, like payment processes and online payments. I don't know. Uh, to, to go further down this road, but um, we're, so I'd say step, step one of who knows how many. <laughs> but, Thank you. Yeah. Any further questions from members of council? Councilor Rowley? Thank you. It's just, if, if this were to be approved and we were to uh, start this project, is this just a cost recovery uh, as far as are we allowed to sell for profit? So again, I think a question for down the road when we get to the actual point of ordering product and getting the product. But okay. my, my sort of anticipation would we we'd be selling at a more or less cost recovery basis for, you know, cost plus a little admin to cover the cost of staff time and stuff like right. that. Thank you. Yeah. For the questions, members of council, please unmute yourself. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson. Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman. Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc. Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley. Yes. Mary and Laura absent. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. Carried.
Thank you, and I have a motion moved by Councillor LeBlanc, seconded by Councillor Bateman, that Council direct staff to review and bring back a report on how many meters of sanitary sewers have been viewed by camera in the past two years. Councillor LeBlanc, would you like to speak to your motion? The reason I'm asking for this, I'm looking for applications for grants and also what roads are gonna be done next because we have a, still about a, 18 kilometers of uh, sewers that have to be done and repairs, see which one they need that are still old. And this used to be done on a continuous basis. And I wanna make sure that it continues on going on those basis. And since I understand this, that's why I would like to review them and see them brought in front of council. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments about the motion? Councilor Anderson? You're muted, Ron. I just wonder, are there are there grants for sewage inspection? And is it something that we need to do by a, a vote here tonight to ask the uh, public works to do? I imagine this type of work is being done, but uh, I know we don't know the exact distance we're doing but we're, we haven't got a report on that but uh, is it something we need to be by doing by motion to get this type of information uh, if, if we want it brought forward to council the answer is yes uh, council direct staff so if we want a report with regard to uh, the number of meters to know the number of meters that have been um, viewed by camera then yes we do need to put it on the floor as a motion uh, as to your other question about grants available for this type of work, I'd ask Mr. Parkinson if he's aware of such things. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, so, well, two comments from, from myself. Uh, the grant applications, yes, road reconstruction is, is always out there and, and underground utility services are usually included in those groups when it's in the urban environment. Uh, I haven't seen anything specifically just for sanitary. Um, or storm specifically uh, in regards to road re reconstruction it's usually done as a package deal and if council wishes i have that information in front of me tonight if you'd like me just to, to tell everybody what those numbers are could you, could you send them as an email so Absolutely. that uh, council leblanc has has that information um yeah. council leblanc if if the director sends that as an email will that suffice as a report for you you're muted, sir. Well, it showed up the last time I was muted. Uh, you you can do it there. Uh, I can. Uh, so what it is, uh, <laughs> yeah, 2018, 2019, and to, to answer Councillor uh, uh, Bate um, and Anderson's question, it's a whole package. You get to do this, and I want to make sure we continue on schedule that we're doing all our roads and we're getting all our maintenance done in a in a in a in an orderly fashion. So that's why I would like to have it all brought up. But yeah, an email would suffice. Um, that being the case, do we need to keep the motion on the floor? If the no, if he's, is... willing to, he's willing to do that, the, the information suffice. Okay. So you're willing to withdraw That's this motion? motion off. Thank you. Yes, I'm willing to withdraw it. Thank you. I have marked it as withdrawn. Thank you. Next motion is moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc, that Council directs staff to investigate and bring back a report on the validity and need for either a fence bylaw or fence guidelines. Councillor Bateman, this is your motion. Would you like to speak to it? I've lost you on screen. There you go. Yeah, both Doug and I put this, uh, well, I put it in and Doug seconded it, or Councillor LeBlanc, because I don't think we I don't believe currently we have a bylaw in our municipality and we have seen situations arise past and present where people are putting up fences and it's causing conflicts with their neighbor because there's no regulation on how high, what kind. So you can go from four feet to 20 feet, block somebody's view next to you. I just think it would be more consistent for the municipality if we had guidelines for the different areas, whether it be commercial, industrial, or residential. Thank you, Councillor Bateman. Are there any questions or comments from members of council? Councillor Anderson? I think it's a good idea. Oh, excuse me. 
Yep, you're good. good no, yeah. now, now you're muted. Yeah, you're good. Now, uh, am I muted? No, you're good. <laughs> I think it's a good idea. I, I've heard the same complaints that uh, Councillor Bateman was talking about, and I think we all have. Um, right now, uh, there's all kinds of reasons for fences, and I, there's a lot of facilities going up around the community that have higher fences for different reasons. Uh, blackout type fences uh, all, so we need to uh, perhaps visit that and I, I think it, you know there's also swimming pools we I don't know if we have where we stand on any of that uh, it might be a good time for a review of whatever we do have and uh, whether it's commercial whether it's uh, residential and we should uh, you know we don't have to, to to go crazy on it I don't want to add a, a lot of extra um, there'd be enforcement on that. There'd be inspections on that. There'd be permits for required for that. Uh, are we ready for? Are we ready for all that? So, but I think it's a great, a good idea that it, that it be reviewed and uh, and perhaps go forward with it really soon. So, I would be, I would support this. I, I think uh, it's it's probably time for us to do that. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. I guess I would ask uh, staff if they would make comment on um just an initial uh, their initial thoughts um mr castleman or mr walsh uh through the mayor to council um yeah we are hearing a, a number of complaints related to fences and um and good fences make good neighbors so maybe we don't have good fences and uh so it might be might be wise to have some guidance given to how and, and where to construct appropriate fencing as uh, Councilor anderson pointed out there'll be variety of different situations that call for different fences and um, um, our bylaw enforcement officer Al McGee he's uh, been firsthand with some of the complaints that have been received so he has some specific insights to that and he's related those on to me and so I would generally concur that we can probably use something uh, as currently we we are absent any fencing bylaw. Thank you Madam Clerk. Alan and I have received lots of different complaints and people wanting to have line fence viewers. And because we don't have a fencing bylaw, line fence viewers really don't have much to go by. Um, if, or even just a guideline, but a simple bylaw might be uh, a good source resource for us. I know that um, some staff don't want us to have one. Um, just because there's other implications um, as in with swimming pools and stuff so it's something that we need to really discuss with a solicitor as well just to make sure but um, I, I think a, a good guideline would be good. So, so this motion is to ask for a report on the validity and need for a fence bylaw or fence guideline so certainly staff could come back with, uh, with a, the opinion um, go out and seek an opinion from a solicitor provide that uh, all that information back to advise council whether or not staff will be moving forward with a recommendation on, on guidelines or a bylaw for fencing, uh, given the direction in this in this motion. And I tend to agree with the members of council who said it's probably high time that we go down this road. I, I can remember a former member of council uh, when I, in my earlier days on council saying, if we keep passing all these bylaws, the, we'll have to put a sign up, uh, welcome to Brighton, here's the three things you're allowed to do. Um, but as Brighton grows and uh, um, we, we are more and more impacted by neighbors and neighborhood issues, uh, perhaps the time for a fencing bylaw is, uh, is appropriate. And uh, Mr. Walsh, just so you know, Robert Frost was being ironic when he said uh, good fences make good neighbors. He was actually advocating for the removal of borders. But anyway, uh, Councillor Bateman, you have your hand up. <laughs> I was just going to add another issue with the fencing and Part of the reason for putting this in it does affect the municipality as well because i'm sure others have seen it when you drive through the community that you see fences that have been erected that are erected in the swales and stuff so that's an issue for the municipality as well not just the type of fence or how high where it's being placed can not just impact the neighbors but could impact us and then impact the neighbors if it floods them thank you anything further so members of council, please unmute yourself. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson. Uh, yes. Councillor Mark Bateman. 
Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Mary and Laura are absent. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. Ms. Carey. Thank you very much. The next motion reads, it's moved by Councillor LeBlanc and seconded by Councillor Bateman. The council directs staff to review the transportation master plan and bring back a report. Uh, Councillor LeBlanc, I'll let you speak to this, please. Uh, there, thank you, your chair. Uh, the reason I wrote this is I, when I talked with uh, our director of planning and I asked him for a report on uh, Georgina Street, he sent me a, uh, a transportation uh, plan for the town of Brighton, how transport and traffic would move. And it was dated uh, 2006. And so the reason I put this was to look at that and to see now with the growth of Brighton, if we need an updated uh, traffic or transportation master plan for, uh, for Brighton to be looked at. And I know it's not budgeted for this year, but possibly for next year. Then maybe the director of planning can answer that. Uh, I'm not sure there was a question, but Mr. Walsh, do you have any comment? <laughs> uh, to the mayor, councillor, sure, I, I can respond to it about the background uh, of the information that uh, I offered to uh, Councillor LeBlanc. It was actually a little excerpt or a little map out of uh, a 2006 master servicing plan. Uh, more so than master transportation plan, but that master servicing plan did touch on transportation issues and looked at where there might be some future speeds. So um, I think later on the agenda with another most notice of motion, uh, we'll have some uh, additional discussion on uh, something similar regarding the extension of Georgina Street, et cetera. So they, I think these two are kind of hand in glove type uh, notice of motion and, um, and I think it's wise to Try and think 25, 30 years in advance and, and get ahead of the development pressures a little bit. Uh, and it's uh, just by showing a, a very schematic future transportation schedule can be very, very assisting, uh, particularly at the time of a development application. So, um, I, I concur with the sentiment of the motion. I'd, I'd welcome the, uh, the director of uh, infrastructure to comment, not to put you on the spot there, Preston, but. Uh, uh, you know, transportation might be more your bailiwick in terms of the signalizations and forecasts of you know, traffic and the TAC manual, things like that, the design details uh, for secondary plans. It might be very useful to have more generalized transportation, future transportation plan though. Mr. Parkinson, any comment? Yeah, yes. Um, your worship, thank you. Um, well, what I've seen in the past is the secondary plan once developed would then drive the transportation plan so that the transportation that we plan for and the roads we try to uh, create or the areas we create them in support the secondary plan and the growth of the municipality. Um, it seems a more logical step, but uh, I guess I would rely on uh, Mr. Walsh's experience as well to, to, you know, which process do we go through first? Do we do the secondary plan? first or do we do the do them simultaneously or do we try to split them up um I, I just think it makes more sense that we develop you know where our future growth is going to be and where those opportunities lie and then we we start to plan the infrastructure to get us there and to support that future growth well here to council i would concur with uh, with president marks so I'm, I'm hearing perhaps that we should be um, waiting for our official plan to be stamped by the county and then engage in the secondary planning process in advance of a, of a transportation master plan. Okay. Um, so this motion is directing staff to review the existing transportation master plan. I'm not sure, I'm not sure how appropriate that is at the end of the day um, and bring back a report. Uh, Councillor Blanc, do you feel that maybe we've, as the mover, do you feel that maybe we've had discussion around that enough that staff are, are aware of what your intention is here and perhaps we don't need to pass this motion? Uh, it's your motion though. Well, I, I haven't seen the motion yet for, through you chair, for a secondary, uh, for a secondary plan. Where's the motion that we voted on in the past year, year and a half for a secondary plan? 
Well, I, I, here's my suspicion, and I haven't had this, this conversation with staff, but my suspicion is that we would see uh, through the budget process, Mr. Walsh uh, asking us to consider a consultant for secondary plan. I've lost, where are you, council? There you are, sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I need to see you on the screen when I'm talking to you, Doug, but I do. <laughs> yeah. I'm always um, smiling. So my, my anticipation is, you know, we'll get the we'll get the okay from the county with regard to our OP, and that Mr. Walsh will be asking us for some monies uh, through the budget for secondary planning. But Mr. Walsh, um, is my suspicion correct there? Uh, to the mayor, to, to council through the mayor, yes, that's correct. It's uh, intention is to recommend secondary plans in the 2021 budget, and uh, part of which would be uh, uh, put a tra traffic schedule showing future streets, and then uh, we can drill down in the details thereafter. Councilor LeBlanc. Yes, uh, the last council meeting on July uh, 20th, I pulled my motion because the uh, director of planning said that he would bring a secondary plan by November of this year. So is that still his, um, his intent is to bring a secondary plan by this November? As, he, as I pulled the motion because he said he was going to bring a secondary plan for November so I wouldn't have to bring up Victoria Street. Is he still on? Is, he still, is that still on the table for him? Um, I guess I'd ask Mr. Walsh to comment on that. That's not my recollection of that discussion. Mr. Walsh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the comments at the time were that uh, the director of planning would bring forward a report recommending secondary plans in the 2021 budget so the budget discussions are happening this fall so in, in about november uh, i think council will find that kind of uh, um, initial budget discussion or guidance uh, report and in that you'll find the, uh, the inclusion of a secondary plan being developed for the greenfield areas and um, um, but not a full detailed secondary plan uh, that would be um, you know scope of which would be is substantive and we'll, we'll need some uh, some significant resources to fully fully build out. And my, my understanding is secondary planning, Mr. Walsh is done, would be done like we do a, an OP update through a consultant. We wouldn't use staff resources for that because your resources are dealing with uh, ongoing development issues in the community. Uh, so any of these other issues would be, we'd be reaching out to uh, other other professionals to help with our planning department to get these things done. Is that true? That's correct. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of public consultation involved in the secondary plan uh, and being developed. It would be uh, fairly, uh, depending on the terms of reference that are finally set, it can be fairly detailed, which is a direction I'd like to go because it, it expedites development and can streamline development. So it really does necessitate uh, not just one or two consultants, but probably a, a team, uh, a bigger firm to uh, really pull it off in a timely fashion. Okay, uh, Councillor LeBlanc, how would you like to proceed with this motion? I think we should wait from what I hear. Just wait, I'm not oh, I'm there, so you're, you're good, you're good. Uh, so from what I'm hearing, uh, we should, uh, uh, another one, we should pull it because it's not ready. Okay. We're not there yet. Um, and, before I, and before we officially withdraw it, I see Councillor Bateman's hand up. Thank you, Mayor. I just had a question. I'm not sure if uh, the Director of Planning or Director of Public Works, whoever, just for my informational for reason or everybody on council, for a transportation master plan, is there a legislation, legislative obligation to have one and how long are they good for if you do have one? Anyone have any comment on that? I don't think there is a legislative requirement to have a transportation master plan. So they're, they're as good as for as long as you as long as you have one, I guess, and, and feel the need to update it. But I'd look to Mr. Parkinson or Mr. Walsh to correct me on that. Thank you, Your Worship. I'm not aware of any legislative requirement to have one. It is just good planning, uh, both for asset management and for future growth. And then once you have that uh, detailed transportation plan, it can be updated You know, every five or 10 years as community changes and grows and uh, things uh, become different in the environment around us. Thank you, Mr. Parkinson. Does that answer your question, Mr. Bateman? 
Councilor Bateman, I just wanted to make sure that we weren't under a timeline. Right. We're going to be in violation of something and possibly get slapped with dollar sign fines or something. Thankfully, no. Uh, Councilor Rowley, did I see your hand up? Yeah, I, I'm going to make a comment. I had a couple of questions, but they've all been answered. But um, there again, I look I look forward to the uh, report from both uh, Mr. Walsh and Mr. Parkinson in November so that we can uh, put some hard dollars behind some of this to, to move some of these ideas, plans forward. Thank you, Councilor Rowley. Uh, so with your permission as the mover, Councilor LeBlanc, I'm withdrawing this motion. Yes, thank you. Thank you. The next motion is moved by Councillor LeBlanc, seconded by Councillor Bateman, that Council requests staff of the Planning Department to review upgrading contracting Georgina, Georgina Street to Telephone Road North to Highway 2 John Street over County Road 64. This would assist with traffic control and volume west side of Georgina Street to be reviewed for future development with traffic flow, what infrastructure improvements would be required, this would be helpful to receive a report from staff on how traffic roads would improve with modifications. Councillor LeBlanc, this is your motion. I'd ask you to speak to it, please. Okay. So in reviewing the, the 2006 uh, uh, transportation uh, study, the, in there they recommended be, that traffic gets to be flowing so you have traffic doesn't always have to come down uh, from the 401 down Highway 30 all the way through town. So this, if you just connect it in part to Highway 2, you could go up the Telephone Road, hit the 401 and come down. There's also a water study we're looking at also for bringing a water line down it for a secondary source that would tie into it. And it would, it's also on the outside, it's on the boundary of our built up area. And it would give us more access to go north and south. Uh, in Brighton instead of always going through the downtown. But it doesn't all ha always have to be looked at one phase. So we'll look for the planning department and then to look at it in the phase process. So they would come back with a report, is it viable or isn't viable? So we, they, we can move traffic in different directions through the, through, the, through the municipality. And eventually if we do in our official plan, get the bridge to go across George Street, then you would connect up to County Road 64. And that would help us in our industrial park and our growth to it. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll, um, I've already read the motion, so I will uh, ask members of council if they have any questions or comments on the motion. Councilor Bateman. Uh, let's see, I'm unmuted. For anybody that wishes to answer, including the mover, we were just talked about the transportation master plan and bringing back the secondary plan prior to that or after that. Can this be incorporated into the tra transportation master plan and the secondary plan that Mr. Walsh and Mr. Parkinson are going to be working on? I'm getting a head nod from Mr. Walsh. Council through the mayor, I, 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 I concur with that statement that we really should be looking at some of these things at the same time as uh, land use planning. The, the provincial policy statement indicates that when we're doing land use planning, we should be also doing infrastructure planning concurrently, wherever possible. And uh, so this might be a, a really good example of that. Uh, yes, we do have a road allowance there uh, through that route that uh, Councillor Blanc has described. The, um, that would be an original Crown road allowance, so laid down in 1836 you know, or something like that, but may not be the, the necessary optimal location for it. And so the op optimal location for a north-south route might be best done through uh, through uh, a coordinated review at the same time as the secondary plan. So uh, again, I applaud the long-term thinking to uh, build up the town. Um, and I'd like to broaden the scope of that through the undertaking of a secondary plan uh, to be budgeted in 2021. Thank you, Mr. Walsh and Madam Clerk, for the record, we note that Deputy Mayor Vink has joined us at 7.53 p.m. Welcome, Deputy Mayor. Um, we are on 
uh, item 6.5 for your information. Uh, we're into the motions and notices of motion. Uh, I'm generally supportive of this, just so you know, everybody. I think uh, this is a, a good idea. It, it provides not just a bypass uh, off of County Road 30. Um, it offers opportunity uh, through our industrial park, as Councillor LeBlanc noted, and uh, of course uh, helps with uh, one of the strategic items in our um, strategic plan, which is with regard to the overpass at John Street. So it would all tie in quite well. And uh, if we're really thinking very long term, um, and we were to tie this into the north portion or the telephone road, County Road 26 portion of that roadway, uh, we could probably at some point in the future uh, seek an alternate uh, egress and uh, ingress off of the 401 um, to Brighton at some, as I say, in the very, in the very far future. I'll be, uh, I'll be in one of our retirement homes by then, I'm sure. But it's good to uh, it's good to allow future councils uh, to try to set up future councils for success rather than failure. And I think this is uh, one of those items that helps us to do that. So that said, though, gentlemen, I see that um, it, you know this would probably be more appropriately part of a secondary plan. Uh, and I wonder if we should withdraw this motion as well and let the secondary plan process. Uh, play itself out. We know we're going to have to spend some fairly significant money and time and public input on those secondary plans. Um, we already have the John Street road allowance, uh, pardon me, the John Street overpass in the strategic plan. And certainly um, from, a, from a make sense point of view, this does make a lot of sense to uh, try to inc incorporate into secondary planning. Uh, that said, though, um, to staff, I wouldn't want to lose sight of this. I wouldn't want um, for this to, you know, we, we withdraw it from the table and, and suddenly someone says, well, you could have passed that motion back in 2020, but you didn't bother to, and we lose sight of it. So I'm, I'm wondering how we keep sort of a bookmark on that um, without, without presupposing we're going to withdraw this motion, of course, because that would be inappropriate, Councillor LeBlanc. But you know, we also don't want to um, hamstring anybody into assuming that's going to be the bypass if there's a better idea out there that some of us haven't thought of. So I, I guess I'd ask staff, how do we make sure this gets bookmarked uh, without, ham, without hamstringing uh, staff and, and a future consultant? Mr. Parkinson. Um, to, uh, to the council, I guess, I guess I guess maybe it's me. Uh, I was just going to suggest that perhaps as a, a bookmark when we look at uh, different uh, options, that that be one option that gets assessed in comparison to other options. And uh, so it will be part of a, an, an assessment process. An assessment will have criterion looking at the costs and benefits of uh, various uh, uh, considerations and then weigh out the best the best option. And maybe at the end of the day, this uh, the scenario that's being described might be the best option uh, once we consider cost of acquisition of land and, and other things. But um, um, at least we'll go through that planning exercise and uh, have confidence in in uh, a major piece of capital infrastructure in, in the future. So, Councillor LeBlanc, I wonder if we could amend this motion to read something like that, uh, Council. Um, direct staff to have consideration for a John Georgina Street road extension during the secondary planning process. You're, mu you're muted, Doug. As long as we keep on looking in the future and have a vision for where we want to go and not piecemealing it. And basically, eventually, if you start looking at all these things and you bring them up, some light bulbs will come on where we got to go and, and, and to do things. I know it's been brought up before, and we also in, in the the um, the water plant that they're bringing up, we also have to bring a secondary line from the reservoir into town, and you want to do it in the place where you're going to create the less havoc, but also give us the best bang and more area for our roads and where we can grow from. So that's where I was looking at this. but. If they're going to look at it in the secondary plan and bring it up in November for budget, um, in favor of that, as long as they don't lose sight of it. 
So are you okay if we amend the motion as a friendly amendment? So you as the mover and Councillor Bateman as the seconder, that council uh, direct staff to have consideration for a Georgina Street, John Street roadway extension during the secondary planning process. Yes, if I can ever get a notice of motion passed by council, yes, I would try it. <laughs> Well, let's see if we can get this one done. Councillor Bateman, are you okay with that amendment? I am. Okay. So give me a second while I while I rewrite this. So I have a motion moved by Councillor LeBlanc, seconded by Councillor Bateman, that council direct staff to have consideration for a John Street, Georgina Street roadway extension during the secondary planning process. Is that okay with you, Councillors LeBlanc and Bateman? Yeah. Yes. Is there any further discussion from members of council? Councillor Rowley. Thank you, Mayor. I was just noticing that uh, our CAO was making notes as well. And I believe at some point this fall, we are going to be reviewing our strap plan and I believe that our uh, the John Street overpass is included in that. And I don't know without having it in front of me where we are with that, but is this something that could be highlighted then so we could have a bit more of an in-depth uh, discussion when we deal with it uh, at strap plan time? I'm going to say you and I are quite like-minded on that concept, absolutely. I think that would be appropriate. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Hi, thank you, sorry I was late. Um, yeah, so I think, um, thank you, Councillor LeBlanc. This is the kind of thinking that we need to be doing. This is what, what our job as council is, is to look at the big picture and where we need to go. And sometimes that takes a little while, it takes conversation. So I'm glad we're opening up this conversation. So um, I am in favor of this and uh, with the amendment, uh, the wording is probably more in line with what we need to do. So again, um, thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Any further discussion? Members of council, please unmute yourself. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ryan Anderson. Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman. Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc. Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley. Yes. Mary is absent. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink. Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. It's carried. Thank you. Our final council motion or motions from notices of motion this evening is moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor Blanc. The council requests staff to bring back to council a report for a potential bylaw to license, regulate, and govern the operation of short term accommodation dwelling rentals, uh, Airbnbs, as they're sometimes called, in the municipality of Brighton. Uh, Mr. Ba Councilor Bateman, as the mover, would you like to speak to this motion? Uh, this is something my myself and Councilor Blanc put in because many of the municipalities around us, big and small, have done this. I think it's no secret that many municipalities, I don't know if the right word is suffer from this, because your Airbnbs, it, it does create, a, it's great to have them. It creates accommodation where they're needed, but when they're unregulated, we have no idea how many we have, and there's so many offshoots from that. It, one being it does artificially drive up the cost of housing in communities, even as communities as big as Toronto are suffering from this. And they recently passed one because people are buying places as investment property. They're Airbnbs and we don't even know they are. And the other aspect of it and the timing was with the COVID-19 pandemic, this is one area that is so unregulated that we have no idea who is staying within the community. There is no contact tracing or anything else because we don't know where the Airbnbs are and when they're operating. And my understanding, we've had some that operated right through the early stages of the pandemic, 
I think Councillor Blanc can speak to that better than I could because I think he was speaking to some of them. I just think it's there's a need for it, as I think most communities have recognized that now, big and small, because it is a growing industry. Thank you, Councillor Bateman. I'll open the floor for questions or comments from members of Council. Councillor LeBlanc. And also, to you, Chair, also the, um, like Napanee, Jiv just passed one, and they convert these, these properties from, from residential to commercial properties because they are being licensed. They're not rent, rented under the normal stance that they're rented for six months to a year. They're on a daily basis. And also, we're talking with some of the, the um, commercial cleaning staff in Brighton. I'm going to use this number. They say there's about 40 and only 20 of them are being cleaned regularly by the professional cleaning staff for COVID and stuff that they do. But most of them are being rented or through a company out of Toronto, a lot of them are. And so they, they take a percentage, so you don't know who's coming. The one that was with me, that was during the COVID, they were trying to sell their jewelry at the gas station and they were living just off of Highway 2 and there was about 30 of them in, in an Airbnb. And they were from Quebec, from everywhere. So I load them in the back of my truck. I mean, the back of my half ton, not where I was. And I drove them to where they were because they said they didn't, they were looking for money for gas, but it wasn't true. They were just trying to sell stuff. But they were here from everywhere. So they were cousins and they wanted to have a meeting. And this is in the month of May, April. So this is why we brought this motion up, starting to look at it. And also it has to do, if we want a motel, you can't have 60, 40 vacant rooms because a motel is commercial property and it should be zoned accordingly. And this is what they found in Prince Edward County. Napanee has just passed it. Toronto just happened, passed theirs, and it went through the Supreme Court of Canada, and their bylaws got upheld. So that's why we should go in with the times. I thank you. Thank you, Councillor LeBlanc, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, I think we're seeing these becoming more and more popular, and they're popping up all over Brighton. In the beginning, I, we've had we've discussed it before. Um, but uh, in the beginning, there weren't a whole, a whole lot of them, but certainly time to, uh, to regulate it and just to protect, um, protect those who are running a legitimate operation and to protect those who are coming to visit. And uh, so it's certainly something I think we need to look at as well. Thank you. Thank you, anything further? Right. Councillor Anderson. Uh, in addition to that, I'm hearing a lot lately about uh, people coming with trailers to Brighton and parking in people's driveways and on their on their side lawns and spending the weekend here um, uh, using it at, because they can't get into uh, the parks. So they're so they may be family and they may not be. And I've heard in some cases where they're not family; they're just renting a, a trailer on their property. Um, so that can maybe be incorporated and looked at at the same time, because I know, I believe it is happening. Um, I think accommodations is something that we really, uh, uh, I, I have my mind on it. And, and the air, the, this rental, you're correct, uh, Councillor Bateman, about it taking away rental uh, facilities for, for people that want to rent, rent space. Um, to live in, not just for a weekend. Um, but uh, I think, you know, accommodation is something that uh, we really are going to need down the road here if we want to see that it's a reasonable type of growth of services. So, um, so yes, we need to regulate it, we need to monitor it, but we need to look at the entire uh, accommodation sector and uh, and do it at the same time. So I think it's it, it's good timing again. Uh, from the councillors, and uh, I'll, I'll support it. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. Anything else? I'm supportive of this just generally. I think um, both from a taxation point of view and from a, a long-term rental accommodation shortage in the community, of which we have a fairly significant one, uh, we need to make sure that we're regulating uh, this industry, but also making sure that everyone's paying their fair share. Uh, because quite right, if if we were to if we are to attract uh, a hotel or a motel business to the community, um, they will be paying fairly significant levels of taxation, not just uh, residential taxes. So, um, 
Residential taxes are of course important, important to a community like ours, which is almost entirely made up of those, but these operators should be paying uh, their fair shake and right now they're not. Anything further on this before I call the vote? So member, I'll go ahead, Councillor Bateman. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I was just gonna add, you just uh, mentioned, it does greatly impact the long-term rental availability in the municipality not just the availability but the affordability of it because we have you know right wrong or indifferent gained a reputation of not having affordable rental units for people i had somebody contact me for instance without names wanting to know if i knew of any place to rent and they were looking to pay a thousand dollars a month and it's tough to be able to say i don't think you have a chance and this type of stuff doesn't help that so i think this will go a long way Thank you. Thank you. Anything further? Members of council, please unmute yourself. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. <coughs> Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tatman is absent. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. Carried. Thank you. So we move into bylaws. Uh, the only bylaw we'll be considering this evening is with regard to the non-union agreement. And I'll need a mover and a seconder. And the bylaw reads that council gives a bylaw. It's for second and third reading and finally passes on this date. Being a bylaw to authorize the CAO and clerk to execute an agreement between the corporation of the municipality of Brighton and non-union employees for the period starting of on January 1st, 2020, and ending on December 31st, 2020. Is there a mover? Councillor Rowley? Is there a seconder? Councillor LeBlanc? Is there any discussion? Members of Council, please unmute yourself. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. <clears throat> Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Mary Tadman is absent. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. Carried. Thank you again. So we move into round table discussion. So before we uh, do the actual round table, um, we do have a few items on the roundtable dis discussion to discuss, the first being Santa Claus Parade. Uh, I know that our Community Events Committee is looking for some direction. Um, anecdotally, uh, Chief Caddick um, and the Health Unit had some brief discussions. I think you said the Health Unit anyway, Chief. Uh, and the sort of the anecdotal recommendation would be that we um, say something to the effect of to the community events committee um, not the traditional uh, santa claus parade where people would be gathering on the side of the road but if you can come up with something different and i know the community events committee has uh, thrown out a few different ideas that would allow for santa claus to for example uh, drop by neighborhoods uh, on different days of the of the uh, christmas season or something like that so um, council rowley you had your hand up I guess I was just, I'm just going to repeat what you said, Mayor. Um, the same thing, just having a very informal conversation with one or two uh, last week that a couple of those kind of ideas are being tossed around. Nothing has been formalized. The committee hasn't been together at all. So, uh, and I think the plan is that the chair will be awaiting what our decision is before he can call a meeting so that we can have our own roundtable discussion as to how we can uh, proceed with this in November. Thank you. <clears throat> Do you want to? Is, is there a motion you want to put on the floor, Councillor Rowley, with regard to that? Uh, I'm not the wordy person. Maybe you are, but uh, did you call me wordy? <laughs> uh, how about something like that? That council directs the community events uh, committee to, to propose. Come up with an idea. To, yeah, to propose creative solutions for um, a Santa Claus parade. Okay. That's, that sounds fine with me. 
uh, Councillor Bateman also sits on that committee with me, so uh, he might want to chime in as well. Councillor Bateman? No, I'm in agreement with that. That sounds good. Uh, Councillors Rowley and Bateman, are you okay moving and seconding this then? Yes. Yes. So it's moved by Council Rowley, seconded by Councilor Bateman. And that council directs the community events committee to provide a creative solution instead of holding a traditional Santa Claus parade. Councilors Rowley and Bateman, does that wording work for you? Yes. Yes. Is there any discussion from members of council? Members of council, please unmute yourself. And Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councilor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councilor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councilor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councilor Emily Rowley? Yes. Mary Tab absent. Councilor Deputy Mayor Laura Bank? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. Carried. Thank you. The next item uh, is a correspondence item from the Brighton Rotary requesting they, they uh, park a trailer in and the arena parking lot to provide the collection of empties for the cadets. And the motion will read that council support or receive the request from the Brighton Rotary Club to park Rotary Club trailer once a month in the King Edward Park Arena parking lot for the purpose of collecting empties for the cadets. So if you're, a, if you're the mover, let me know whether you're supporting or receiving. Okay, we got, we got a lot of people going on. Councilor Rowley, I see you first. Are you supporting yes. or receiving? Uh, I, yes, can I just, do you have to wait for the motion before I can finish my comment? You do. Okay, but I am supporting. Okay. And the seconder was Deputy Mayor Vink. Councillor Rowley, your comment? Uh, has this not already started? Mr. Miller? Uh, I'm not aware that it has. I was okay. approached a couple of months ago with the idea. And okay. I, 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 did see, I did see it advertised or, or a post on Facebook. Yeah, uh, That it too. was proceeding, but I'm not sure. I think it was this Sunday. Oh, okay. That, so. I'm, Still going to support it. We'll, we'll we'll quickly pass this motion so they can they can move forward. <laughs> Any other questions or comments from members of council? Members of council, please unmute yourself. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councilor Ron Anderson. Yes. Councilor Mark Bateman. Yes. Councilor Doug LeBlanc. Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Mary Tubman absent. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. Carried. Uh, the next piece of correspondence is the Northumberland County updates, July and August, which I provided to the clerk's office. If anybody has any questions or comments on that, you can email me anytime. And. Oh yes, the correspondence from Ram uh, Guilin with regard to Chapel Street and the motion will be the council received the correspondence from Ram Guilin and I hope I'm pronouncing Bram's name correctly there regarding a parking matter on Chapel Street. And that's all the motion says at the moment. So if you want to add something to that, you may if you're the mover. Anyone? Councilor LeBlanc? Uh, your chair, the chair. Uh, we brought this up last year about traffic street and the parking on both sides. When the uh, elderly ladies came to give a deposition, I believe we passed the motion that council was to come back with recommendation 
on how to adjust the parking on Ch Chapel Street. And it never did come back, but we had made a decision to basically uh, remove the signs on one side or the staff was to come back and they haven't come back. But maybe uh, Alan McGee can answer that. I think that was Mead Street, Councillor LeBlanc. I don't think that was Chapel. Mr. McGee? No. no. Yes, that was Mead Street. It went uh, from uh, parking in the day to no parking back to allowing parking during the day on the west side. Right. Actually, on the west side only. Yeah, okay. to, to, to help accommodate the uh, the apartments there at 12, okay, thank you. 12A or whatever the, the yeah. No, you apologize. Uh, no, not at all. Uh, we can't we can't be expected to remember everything. Um, it, so I'm, I've got your name down as the mover to receive this correspondence. Is that all you want this motion to read? No, I would like for staff to come back with some type of recommendation to address this problem. Like Mead Street, we put a date when they were supposed to come back, so it's not open-ended. So it would read something like, uh, and refer to staff for a report to address the noted parking concerns. In this case, it's too restrictive. <laughs> So right. I might say, is there a seconder for that? I'll second. Councillor Anderson. Is there any discussion? Any further discussion, I should say. Uh, members of council, please unmute yourself. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson. Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman. Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Mary Tubman Upson? Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Uh, the next motion will be that Council receive the Northumberland County updates for July and August 2020. Is there a mover? Councillor Rowley, is there a seconder? Deputy Mayor Vink? Is there any discussion? Members of council, please unmute yourself. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tabman's absence? Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. Carried. Thank you. We have no in camera session this evening. Oh, sorry. It's the round table. I should go around if we're going to have a round table. So I will just ask members of staff, um, and in, in no particular order except how I see you on my screen, if you have any updates for us since our July. 20th, 23rd meeting, whenever we last saw each other. And uh, Madam Clerk, you're first and muted. <clears throat> um, no real updates, except that we are going to try to have council meetings at the community center, King Edward, um, starting in September with full council back together. We have to have it there because the chambers is not big enough for us to accommodate 50 people with a two meters um, between each person that yeah, would be with staff too. So um, I'll be coming up with a protocol for that and I will be emailing that out to all council members. Thank you, we look forward to that. I think we're all looking forward to getting back to uh, meetings where we can actually be in the same space together. And I know uh, there are certain members of the public chomping at the bit, Mark says no, but there are certainly members of the count of the committee community chomping at the bit to uh, to uh, wag their fingers at us, I think. So we'll, uh, we'll give them that opportunity, of course. Mr. Then thank you for working on that, Candace. We appreciate it very much. Mr. Parkinson. Thank you, Your Worship. 
Um, just a couple of updates. Um, all of our service treated roads for double service treating are prepped and ready. The service treater contractor will be in tomorrow and uh, he, over the course of the next week or so, he'll get the rest of those roads done. And then once those roads are completed, uh, we'll shift our focus to the roadside brushing, uh, urban brushing and tree trimming around sidewalks and intersections and street clearance and that sort of thing, potholes and street sweeping. And uh, also the sidewalk inspections and condition assessments about 70% completed at this time. They've done everything north of the tracks and then they'll start working on the south of the tracks, uh, I think tomorrow, as long as the weather permits. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll wait so that, I guess I should have asked if any members of council had questions for uh, the clerk. So I'll do that. This is for the clerk, Councillor Anderson. Thank you. Uh, I just maybe an update. Uh, when are we opening the uh, the town office and the library? With, with the okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wait till we get to Chief Caddick on that one, okay. um, because he's been really uh, instrumental on on that reopening uh, group. So, uh, okay. Chief Caddick, you're gonna hold that uh, question in abatement till we get to you. So, any questions for the clerk? Okay, now any questions for Mr. Parkinson? Councilor Rowley. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as per my email, Preston, um, notice that the uh, traffic lights are coming up. My compliments to you. Are are they all finished now, or uh, will the the intersection at the Royal Bank and say at King Edward Park are those street lights going to be uh, replaced as well? Another comment with the um, the street lights in the main core. That they were upgraded. Are they LED? They don't look like LED lights to me. Mr. Parkinson? Um, to Council through your worship. Um, yes, they're about 95% complete. They're just waiting for a couple of components. And uh, that project was only inclusive of those two intersections. Uh, the intersections of the Royal Bank and out on John Street will require additional capital projects as we move forward. So one of those two intersections will be included. Uh, in the budget this fall. Uh, perhaps it's the one by the high school on Terry Fox Drive. Uh, yeah. That this one that we upgrade. Thank you, Preston. And I'm sorry, I'm, did you answer the question about are they LED lights? Oh, sorry, no, I, I breezed over that. Uh, yes, they are LED lights. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Walsh. Oh, sorry, Councillor Bateman has a question for Mr. Parkinson. Sorry, guys. Just a couple of questions for you, Preston. Uh, I think I emailed it and I'm not sure if you had enough time to look at it yet, but I, we brought it up tonight. Uh, Smithfield came up. Is that project for the sidewalk that was approved, is that gonna be something that's done this year when the sidewalks get done? I think it was uh, to go in behind the school to lead to Smithfield School. And the other question was, are we still on target I know I'm not in a hurry to see it. I don't want a picture with it, but I know we had an EV vehicle coming for your department. Uh, through your worship. Um, yes, the sidewalk from Smithfield, um, uh, for, sorry, from Smith Street to the public school would be done this year. Oh, and as far as the electric vehicle, it was supposed to be delivered August 15th. The dealership further uh, delayed that to September 15th. And right now they really don't have an answer for me and I can't get a delivery date. Uh, so I think uh, they're having some trouble like everybody else getting delivery on their shipments and, and maybe the factory was shut down for a time due to COVID. But uh, once I have a firm date, I can certainly circulate that to all of council and staff so that they know. Thank you. Councilor LeBlanc. You're, you're muted still, Doug. Through you, your chair and, and the director of public works. Uh, Stony Point Road South and Stony Point Road, uh, basically uh, you've just resurfaced those and by the S turn, there's still uh, the old potholes are back. And by um, and on Stony Point Road by uh, 911 number 527 and 47, it's like a washboard and the potholes that were there before are back there. Is there any way of prepping the roads or getting them back? Because 
it doesn't good, look good for council or staff if we've resurfaced the road and the old potholes are right back at the same location. Is there any way of fixing that? Through you, Your Worship. Uh, Stony Point Road South was, uh, and so was Shoal Point Road, were on the agendas for 2019. The county didn't get to them, so they've suffered further um, deterioration through the spring yeah. that we had. Uh, so our, our goal with that road this year was to try to save 95% of it with the single surface treatment. And then if we have to go back next year to do a couple of spot repairs to clean up those areas, then that would be far more cost beneficial than you know, DSTing the whole road this year. Uh, so it was more of a, a save and uh, trying, just trying to keep the road in as best condition as we can. And if those uh, areas reflect back through with potholes and, and whatnot, then uh, we'll have to look at that next year. But the goal was to save 95% of the road and maybe sacrifice five in, in the program next year. Good answer. Okay. Rowley? Uh, thank you, Ostrander. Um, once again, Preston, uh, Bateman, Bateman, <laughs> Councillor Bateman brought up uh, concrete. So I'm wondering, uh, I know with the DBIA, there's still uh, some benches to be uh, placed about uh, this year. Wonder if those cement pads are going to be done and if and when, I'm sure you will coordinate that with the DBIA. Through your worship. Uh, yes, they've started that prep work now. Uh, the uh, bench is prepped up by Dr. Twitty's old office. It's ready to go. And they've started the prep work to remove the old ones in a couple other locations. So uh, once their service stream program's done, then we'll be able to move on and get those benches done. Uh, the DBA has already given us all the locations that they want those new benches placed at. So we're just uh, ready to act on it and to get it done. And the one on Prince Edward Street, just below the railroad tracks is part of that list as well, correct? The one that we are putting in memory of Mrs. Richardson. Absolutely, it's on the list. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Anderson. I just uh, go back to the sidewalks uh, in town. You're just south of the tracks next week or this week. Um, marking, when does, do they, can they not start, get this, uh, get started on working on the sidewalks at the same time? Or? Is it the same people doing the marking as doing the digging? Uh, through your worship, it's our two summer students in the GIS department that are doing our sidewalk evaluations and condition assessment. Um, <clears throat> they've coordinated that with our GIS person uh, to record all the information so we can tally it and log it and then plan future works. Uh, the concrete uh, contractor to do the replacement is a totally different company. And I believe they're set to come in the first week of September at this point. Uh, they have all their locates in, so the only holdup is them getting here and doing the work. Mm, okay, well, so there's not a big holdup. <laughs> That's good. I think everything's a bit behind because of uh, this dreaded pandemic, but uh, we are getting there. Mr. Walsh, any updates for us? Uh, through the mayor. Um, Council may recall passing the no parking bylaw last session for Presque Hill Parkway and Huff Road. Uh, Alan McGee, the law enforcement officer, was quick the next day to get the parking, no parking signs up, and then make a couple of uh, rounds on the weekend to see how things were working out. No calls, but he, he volunteered to go out and take a look at things. And so it seems to be very uh, effective in the, in the immediate time frame that the signs were put up. and. Uh, uh, the manager of Peskill Park has also been complimentary of, of the efforts. Um, the second thing uh, maybe I would like to bring to your attention is official plan amendment number six looks like it's going to be uh, coming to county council session next for uh, what sounds to be final approval with a couple of small housekeeping amendments within it, but uh, substantively uh, approved is my understanding in my conversation today with the county planner. Any questions for Mr. Walsh, Deputy Mayor? Uh, thank you, and thank you for getting those signs up. Uh, definitely, there's certainly a difference. Um, have heard some complaints about the Ontario Street boat launch being uh, people parking there instead and uh, causing some issues down there with garbage and, and other matter. Um, 
any ideas on what we can do about that um, at all? Well, to the mayor, to the council, there was some discussions, uh, email uh, discussions today. Uh, and uh, I think that maybe once there's designated areas for those persons who are launching their boats to park their vehicle with the attached trailer, um, and then that will default to having less space for the, the what I call the transient uh, person's parking to then walk to the parks and that sort of thing. So I think for those persons who are actually paying for parking, being the person launching their boat, for them to have a designated space, I think that will um, in itself kind of regulate the site and uh, not overcrowding it with uh, with the other person's parking and meandering into the park. So I think that's my first thought, first inklings, and how that can be resolved. And with less um, congregation of individuals, that should help hopefully also address some of the waste problems. Any other questions for Mr. Walsh? Uh, Mr. Poole, anything that wasn't addressed by Mr. Parkinson that you'd like to speak to? Head nod would be fine. Shaking back and forth would be fine. Just, just a few updates, Your Worship. Um, so we mentioned sidewalks scheduled for September 9th. The tree cutting tender also the same date scheduled for. Uh, the water modeling study is out and closing on September 9th. Uh, Sanford is still on track to start construction on the 24th, the week of the 24th. Um, still waiting for a um, schedule for the asphalt repairs. Uh, Sharp Road is is closing on August 31st, the extension in the industrial park, that is. Um, the OSIM investigations are underway now for the bridges. Uh, the YMCA is done. Showers are done, uh, just except for just about clean up. Uh, the, the electric vehicle charging station project that came to council uh, some time ago, it's starting back up. So they're looking at doing site visits. We had four sites designated for chargers, uh, being the arena, Alice Street, um, over by Sobeys, and the um, fourth one fails me right now, but uh, that's in a nutshell. Thank you, Mr. Poole. Any quick questions for Mr. Poole? Councilor LeBlanc. Through you, your chair, for Mr. Poole, on the, in Orchard Gate on Portland Drive, those uh, lights for the people that are living there that are, haven't been switched on yet. Uh, it's been a month and a half. Have they found the light switch yet? How to turn on those night lights? That's through you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, well, they know where light switches are. There has been a breakdown in communication that we're continuing to try to find out the contact or try to get to the contact at Hydra One, where we believe the breakdown is, is right now. So both the developers and ourselves are making calls to try to hustle this up. Apparently there's large COVID delays in their, their work processes. So it's really, it's very much on the, the uh, radar. We're trying to get it resolved. Um, yeah, a couple of the things that are in the Orchard Gate and Apple, there's a number of uh, deficiencies that have been noted, uh, you know, uh, asphalt driveways, curb repairs, uh, the contractor, the developers have been contacted. They have people scheduled like he, the next two weeks. I keep hearing that, but so we're still continuing to follow up on that stuff. Mr. LeBlanc. 
I, so I'm not through you, your chair to, to uh, Mr. Scottpool. I'm not going to dance around it. Um, Harbor Point Pond is, when is this going to come back in front of council to be dealt with? Uh, looking at the, I think it's the meeting in the 21st. Uh, we've got, we've got a really good response. We've been, uh, sort of collating the results. Uh, they're, they are all over the map, but they're, they're quite interesting. And well, sorry, the, the other thing that's kind of somewhat related to Orchard Gate is the tree planting program that's still continuing. On, we've contacted all the the uh, landowners in uh, stage one of phase three, and uh, we're we're looking at plantings this fall. Uh, we're also, I guess, we've also discovered that the second phase or second stage of that third phase uh, also requires trees as well. We didn't realize that because we didn't have any money uh, deposited in our accounts, but apparently it ha is held in trust. So the people in the second stage of phase three will also be getting trees. So we're going to be expanding that program also for planting this fall. Thank you. Any further questions for Mr. Poole? Thanks, Scott. Chief? Chief Caddick. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Uh, through you to Council, uh, just uh, very quickly to report our uh, COVID recovery team has been doing uh, an exceptional job and really uh, moving forward with policy and procedure around the uh, uh, opening and reopening of our municipal facilities. Uh, I'm happy to report that we are going to move ahead to, uh, to have an opening on September the 8th will be the first day that the, uh, and we're going to, uh, you know, there, all the, that will be all our facilities. And uh, we certainly, uh, you can, the municipality, the residents can look forward to some uh, information forthcoming. I did have a conversation today with Mr. Hagerman, our economic development uh, individual, and he's uh, beginning to work on that in cooperation with the uh, CAO Castleman and myself. Thank you, Chief Caddick. And there's this persistent rumor that you might be leaving us. <laughs> You're not smiling, Chief. I, maybe you didn't hear me. <laughs> no, I. my internet is shaky at best right now out here in Elton. Oh, there you go. I said there's a, there's a persistent rumor that you're leaving us and I wish to offer you uh, congratulations. I've done this in writing already, but congratulations to you um, on your new role uh, in Quinney West. It's unfortunate you have to go to Quinney West to do it, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Um, we're gonna miss you, Chief Caddick. You, are, you have been an exceptional uh, senior manager in this municipality. And um, uh, as I said uh, in writing, your, your frank, your frank uh, discussions with me and your open sense and your humor have, uh, have helped us all along the way. So I wanna uh, thank you uh, on behalf of council and the community for your service here and wish you all the very best in Quinney West. And I know you're still here for a couple of weeks, so I'm going to rib you a little more as we go along. Well, again, uh, thank you, your worship, and through you to all of council and, and, st and senior staff and all our staff. Uh, I want to take just an opportunity to thank all of you. It's certainly been uh, a pleasure in the last, in this term of council, uh, uh, working with all of you and the uh, collaboration and the, the good communication I see happening is what's made it uh, a great time. Uh, again, uh, I'm, I have some sadness that I'm leaving Brighton. I'm not, I'm going to continue to live here in Brighton because it is, uh, it's a great municipality to, to live in. And uh, there is no requirement that I have to move into the city of Quinney West to be the deputy chief, but it, it's certainly a career move that, uh, that will certainly advance my career within fire service. And uh, that's really the reason it's happening. But uh, again, you have a great team here in the fire department that will carry on. And uh, I have every faith that they will, they will uh, do great things. Thank you, Chief. Any questions for Chief Caddick before we move on? Councillor Anderson.
I wish you well too, Chief, but uh, I just wonder if Mr. Whalen is going to give you a spot for your trailer over in that new fire hall that he's got over there. There's lots of room there that you can camp out there. Uh, what do you think about that? I think there's lots of bays over there, I can assure you. <laughs> all the best to you. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else? Councillor Bateman? I just want to follow up with the Chief. I already had uh, spoken to you, Rick, and congratulated you. I also want to just uh, reach out and make sure that you're not going to use Mayor Harrison's catchphrase, Quinty West is best. <laughs> See, we're going to reside in municipality because I like to say Brighton is better. Uh, he, he can't, uh, Councillor Bateman. If you use that phrase, you have to pay Mayor Harrison $2. So okay. <laughs> it's copywritten. Deputy Mayor? I want to echo what everyone was saying you know congratulations glad you're staying in brighton we all know that brighton is the best and uh, <laughs> best place to live and uh, um you know uh, i'm happy for you uh, sad for us um hopefully um we'll still see you around involved in things all right thank you uh, Deputy Mayor. anyone else mr miller Yeah, you know, a couple things. Um, we heard late last week the uh, investing in Canada infrastructure program that we put a, an application in uh, way back in November um, for the uh, three components of the arena, the chiller, the uh, dehumidifier, and the uh, pavement. Um, we were turned down for that grant. Um, but we do have... Uh, an amount set aside in this year's budget that was municipally uh, tax supported. Um, I think it was 80,000 uh, towards the, uh, the main project, which totaled about three or 240,000. And so we're going to use half of that amount to uh, go ahead and tender for a new dehumidifier, which, uh, which we really need in, in the arena. Uh, the remaining amount we will put in reserves for future years and hopefully come up with a game plan for next year's budget. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Any questions for Mr. Miller? Councilor Rowley? Thank you, just one, Jim. Um, disappointing again that we were turned down, but were you given any reason as to why uh, we we aren't going to be awarded any money? Uh, I think CEO Castleman has information on that, I believe. You want to comment on that now, CAO, or when we get to you? I can comment now, sure. So uh, program very, very oversubscribed. Uh, so um, uh, many municipalities across Ontario did not receive any funding at all. So no, no real reason in terms of our application, just luck of the draw, so to speak. Correct. Um, if, if I can continue, uh, Your yeah. Worship. Yep. Um, update on the skateboard uh, project. Um, they will be in uh, again. COVID is really delaying uh, our contractor. He got a couple other projects lined up before he comes here, so he they will be uh, on site uh, first part of October to do all the uh, the digging and, and the prep work, and then they will be back. Uh, in May next year um, to uh, do all the concrete work and, uh, and finish it. And uh, they're saying that we should have a uh, completed skateboard park by the uh, 28th of May. No, if, we have a, if we have a regular spring. <laughs> Whatever that means. Whatever that Counsel means, yes. Councillor Anderson. Um, sorry, I didn't hear. Uh, oh. No, you're good. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the date. You said we should, we should have it by and May I, 28th. I lost. May 28th, if they're able to get in, you know, early in the spring mm -hmm. next of next year. Okay. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> Councilor. This Lamont. funding thing. That, this funding thing's really driving me crazy. I, yeah. I tell you, we it's seem crazy. to be getting, uh, well, we, we, we're getting skipped on so many things, so. 
We did get funding for the skateboard yeah. park, though. Yes, I know you did. You did really well there, and I'm really, that that's fantastic. And and then they really needed that, but that arena needed some attention too. And uh, um, and a lot of other and our municipality needs some attention. So hopefully we'll get it soon. Council LeBlanc. Uh, Chair, I'm a, excuse my, um, uh, say I'm sorry, but my broadband went out four times. So I got my exercise running up and down the steps from the basement. But I'm sorry I missed Mr. Caddick, if he's still there. I hope he has a great new job and I'm gonna miss talking to him from time to time. To go to uh, Mr. Miller. Uh, I think you and I talked on uh, on two items. One is for your assistance for uh, a sign for uh, the Codrington uh, uh, Center, so they can advertise all everything for the, for the rural community and the town, so that people can know because everybody drives on that Highway 30 going by to help out. So they, I've talked to you about that. If you can answer that, and the other one is a uh, show and shine because it is, is the municipal uh, parking lot for the, municip for the, for the citizens of uh, Brighton. And I was wondering if uh, you said you brought a report in 2016 for uh, having a show and shine to bring, it, to bring it into the parking lot. And when you talked about insurance, all the cars are insured with automobile and liability insurance. So I was wondering if that was a consideration you were looking at after I, I asked you that. Miller? you <laughs> worship um first one is i am working with the codrington group um towards the sign again it comes down to funding um an outdoor led sign is upwards to 17 or eighteen thousand um, dollars which is not budgeted so we're going to have to find some funding somewhere um you know with maybe some fundraising and uh you know it'll it'll have to be uh looked at next year's budget um, so we're, we're, you know, we're looking at that. Um, the second with the, the car show and shine, it was uh, a request that was brought up four years ago. Uh, they were looking at doing a weekly car show and shine uh, in the uh, parking lot at the arena. And uh, I know council uh, talked about it. And, uh, you know, at the time with a normal summer, the parking lot at King Edward Park is usually is full most weekdays through uh, you know with the ball games and soccer games and whatnot so that was one major reason um, we need the parking for our sporting events and secondly yes the uh, uh, idea of insurance for that event um, there needed to be um, an organizer and they needed to have insurance for that since they're dealing with uh, vehicles in, in you know in and out of the parking lot where there's lots of pedestrians. So they were the main two reasons why it was turned down um, in, in 2016. Have you been contacted by the uh, quote quote organizers of Show and Shine uh, recently? I haven't, no. I think you can anticipate that you will be. So, okay. FYI, yep. just. Just a heads up. I think uh, uh, over the weekend they were they. I someone reached out to me and asked me for um, advice on how to move this forward, and I said you got to talk to Jim, and he, here's his email. So I think you can anticipate that they will be asking for a reconsideration of that 2016 decision, and maybe we can come up with something creative. If not, uh, if not the arena somewhere else, but um, so, I think there had some problem with the Sobies parking lot, and I don't know what it is, but. So a future staff report then. I would I would think that might be appropriate. <laughs> Time will tell. <laughs> uh, Councillor Bateman. A uh, couple questions, one comment. On the skateboard park, uh, Jim, you mentioned construction start this fall and then in May. I'm assuming that would be a fluent target because nobody knows what's gonna come if we're gonna get a second wave. So I, I just wanna put it out there. I don't wanna that be etched in anybody's brain that it's gonna start because we don't know what's gonna take place. but. I'm sure that you're aware of that already. And if you could, Jim, just reach out to me and send me a date of your availability and I'll send some people your way regarding the stuff we spoke about earlier on all the protocols. You just let me know when and I'll send somebody. Okay. And the other question on the Councilor LeBlanc brought up the sign and this could be for Jim and you, uh, Mayor. 
being on a county road is that something that we're going to have to regardless of the funding and if we get the money do we need their permission for this or is this something we can do by ourselves as a municipality because it's off a county road there will be setbacks for sure that the county would have will have uh, regarding the road being a highway um, there's certainly a distance that you're going to have to be away from the road i didn't know if they had any rules on electronic signs with the uh, light of lettering some some places do right so I'm like, um oh. i'd have to check into that at this point and then oh. one last question was that not everybody would be aware is there any update or headway or has it stopped with the people that are intruding onto the arena roof and risking their life and damaging stuff um it's been a quiet couple of weeks um i did send some video into the opp uh, a couple of weeks ago with the culprits and i haven't heard anything since uh, but we are diligent in, in looking at uh you know looking at things on a daily basis see if there's been any 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 sense um luckily there hasn't been uh, but yeah it's been a bad year this year for sure um, safe assumption this might be the same group that we have trouble with up in the municipal building yeah well the municipal building is a bit, the big one too with the irrigation system i um, mean it was it was really uh, I, I would say destroyed <laughs> would be, i would be uh you know a, a word that you could have probably overused on it but yeah, and within four days, the, the sprinkler heads were all ripped out. So, yeah, it's been a bad year. Deputy Mayor? Yes, everyone's just bored. Um, yeah. uh, I just wanted to comment on the funding. Uh, Councillor Anderson, you're, you're concerned about funding and that Bright needs to get something. You know, this has been a common thing. Previous term of council, I'm sure there's previous. Sometimes we get funding, sometimes we don't. It's no fault of ours. And uh, we just have to keep applying and hoping that uh, we we happen to to get funding. Um, I, I don't. I, we've talked about this so many times. So I just wanted to kind of mention that that historically this seems to be the way it goes. If uh, if we were the only municipality with significant need, we would have no problem getting money. But there's 444 of us, all with significant needs, all with arenas that are falling apart or arenas that need significant work all with new projects that are looking for, you know, everybody has infrastructure deficits. There's not a community uh, from St. John's to Victoria that doesn't have an infrastructure deficit of some sort or another. Uh, and everybody's looking for coin from the, their provinces and the federal government. So uh, we will continue to dig at this. We will continue to nurture our federal and provincial relationships and see if they, those bear fruit. Um, we can't always count on that either because the, those folks have masters as well. And, Sometimes those uh, those gentlemen don't uh, don't get all the information that they'd like to see either. So uh, I do appreciate the comments, so Councillor Anderson and Deputy Mayor. Um, we 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 would love to see a, a better a better fairer shake, but uh, you know we just have to. You're right, Count, uh, Deputy Mayor. We just have to keep applying, keep digging away. Uh, anybody else? Councillor Rowley. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to tag on uh, something that Councillor Bateman brought up regarding, um, you know, the uh, vandalism at both the arena and around 35 Alice. And I believe there's also been some concerns at uh, Memorial Park. And I don't know, Jim, if you can answer this or if this will go through the CAO. Uh, earlier this year, there was consideration um, about uh, disconnecting the Wi-Fi on our municipal properties. And I know, uh, we were hoping that that might have been a deterrent. I don't need an answer tonight, but I uh, would wonder if at some point we could uh, maybe get a report as to uh, if if that will happen, and um, you know if, if there's been, been more talk with uh, the OPP uh, on on those kind of things. Um, if I may, Your Worship, um, there has been uh, some conversation with myself and, and CEO Castleman on it. I believe the library will be um, disconnecting their Wi-Fi um, starting very shortly, um, and they will be disconnecting, I believe, at uh, 8.30, and then uh, reconnecting again at 7 a.m. So you'll have Wi-Fi from 7 a.m. to 8.30. Um, I'm actually meeting uh, a couple in a couple of days with ExploreNet, 
as well as our IT uh, person here that we uh, will be able to do the same thing with our router up at uh, Memorial Park. So that's, that's my game plan by hopefully by Thursday afternoon, we'll be able to uh, switch it off at 8.30, have it start again at 7 a.m. Thank you for that, Jim. I know I know the library was waiting for some direction from uh, the municipality as if that would work. So I'm glad to hear that and hopefully that will uh, deter a little bit. I'm not sure it's going to clean everything up, but it might be a help. Thanks. Good. Okay. Anyone else for Mr. Miller? Mr. Castleman, anything to report? Sure, it's, it's great to go last when everybody's already talked about everything. So uh, a, a few things that uh, that I'm working on, obviously we just uh, received and approved our 2019 financial statements. Uh, and this probably quite frankly is in good shape and under the leadership and uh, tutelage of uh, our director of uh, finance who has been on board for a number of different years. So that's, that's great news for us. Uh, hand in hand with that, uh, uh, have some direction from council to try and move forward with the 2021 budget process a little bit quicker than what we've done in the past. And in so doing, uh, Linda uh, Whitefield and myself are working on a budget guideline report to bring before council uh, as early as the next uh, council meeting. So looking forward to a fulsome discussion with council with respect to um, the direction that they might uh, provide. A uh, second item that uh, working on is, uh, as you know, we have a uh, uh, entered into a medical service agreement with uh, a new doctor, Angela Lambracus, and um, we did that uh, probably a couple of months ago. So Angela has recently contacted me, asked for a lease agreement, and we're currently in negotiations to do just that. And uh, once finalized, we'll bring that before council um, uh, probably on the 8th of September for your consideration. Uh, third item that uh, focusing in on uh, with, uh, with staff is the, the whole issue of the MBBR project, both from a tendering standpoint and a financing standpoint. And uh, in due course, we'll be coming to uh, speak to council in that regard Again, that'll be done in September sometime. Uh, we touched upon vandalism. Uh, it remains a uh, hot topic. And uh, we've been in regular contact with the OPP and we're trying to take a multifaceted approach to deal with this issue. Uh, I don't think any one item is going to uh, fix the problem, but uh, Perhaps if we uh, deal with uh, six or seven different incremental items, it might alleviate the, uh, the issue on a, a longer term basis. So just for your information, the uh, Wi-Fi has been changed at the library in this building, effective uh, the 11th of August. So time will tell with respect to what the implications are going to be. That's a little bit of an update uh, for you with respect to uh, three or four items that uh, I'm uh, focusing in on over the course of the next couple of weeks. Any quick questions for Mr. Castleman? Councillor Bateman? Uh, it kind of ties into the CAO and even uh, the Parks and Rec. On the vandalism part, the Wi-Fi shutting off will, will help deter but not eliminate. I don't know, and maybe perhaps you can answer Mayor, we do not have a, let's say for instance, for the King Edward Park area, I think there's signs up that you can't park in there after a certain time, but I don't think we have any bylaw or anything that says you can't be in there after a certain hour on foot. I don't know if anybody can speak to that. Might That might be another way of deterring people because right now, I know when I was there the night I had to call you, the OPP said they were limited on what they could do because they didn't believe we had anything to stop somebody from being there. They could be. No, I, I, I believe we have a curfew on our parks, Mr. Miller. Yes, we do have a bylaw um, that we that we made up. I don't know, ten or twelve years ago, and uh, it is the park. And there is a sign on the uh, the fence of the uh, the ball canteen. And I think another a couple a couple other spots in that park, and there's one at Memorial Park, and uh, it basically says that the park is closed uh, from 11 o'clock at night to six o'clock in the morning. So, uh, 
you know, basically that's, uh, you know, back then was the time when the arena would be open for early practices, or at least the baseball would be playing till nine o'clock or 11 o'clock and it would give them time to get out. So, but that's the curfew right now in the parks, 11 PM to uh, 6 AM. And is there, is there a fine associated with that, Mr. Miller? I believe there is monetary fine. Um, I'm not sure what it is at this point, but it is in the bylaw. Yeah. So it is enforceable. So that's uh, perhaps some information staff can keep in the back of their minds with regard to bylaw enforcement concerns that we've been discussing over time. Um, any other questions for this? I guess that wasn't the CAO, but any questions for the CAO? Councilor LeBlanc. Yes, through you, Chair, to CAO. Uh, if we're going to start the budget in the earlier fashion, is there any way we can get the tenders out in a timely fashion and get some of the work done so it's not always created in the fall? Like the sidewalk started in the spring because we're going to have to do more next year. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, that's exactly the intent. Uh, uh, what I would like to do and have done in other municipalities is uh, really start the process in, in or around June or so and uh, try and get everything approved by Christmas time. And uh, in so doing, gives us the ability to get the tenders out early so we can get at the work early. Um, so um, it just takes a little bit of time. Uh, um, our, our goal from a staff perspective is to uh, uh, look at the budget process on an annual basis and improve it. And uh, do we want to be doing tenders in September and October? The answer is no. Uh, it's best to get them out early and one of the methods of doing that is uh, start the budget process fairly early in the uh, in the preceding year, deal with capital, pre-approve the capital component to allow us to get going with the tendering process as early as we can. Go ahead, Councilor LeBlanc. To you, Chair, to the CAO, because um, as these projects get delayed, it doesn't reflect on staff. For some reason, it reflects on council. and. Um, we wear the flat because we're not the ones doing the tenders, but we're the ones that get the question, why it isn't being done on time and stuff. So I just said it takes time to get there. And the other thing is with all the painting, people are starting to call our sidewalks the flower gardens. We should add a few more colors to it. But anyway, but I thank you very much for everything you said, CEO. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. F FYI, everything reflects on council. That's part of the job. Uh, that that's never going to change. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the budgeting process earlier would be great. It would certainly help us out. I know this year, really, uh, we all hate hearing that things are related to COVID, but the reality is we're behind because of COVID. There's no other, we did start things earlier. We even gave permission earlier, but uh, COVID slowed a lot of things down. So uh, I just want to say, I appreciate staff uh, allowing themselves, you know, to, to, to let us ask these questions. It does help, especially because we haven't been meeting together as often. We don't always know what's going on. So I do appreciate this and it is helpful to hear from everyone um, what's happening in each department. And staff will be happy to know we'll be getting back to face-to-face -face meetings and the round table will disappear from the agenda. <laughs> Any other questions for Mr. Castleman? All right, I'm gonna move on to the confirmatory bylaw. And it reads the council gives a bylaw its first, second, and third reading, and finally passes to on this date being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the corporation of the municipality of Brighton Council meeting held on August 17th, 2020. Is there a mover? Moved by Deputy Mayor Vink. Seconded by Councillor Rowley. Is there any discussion? Members of council, please unmute yourself. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Mary Tadman is absent. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. It's carried. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for a good meeting, um, for staff for putting those reports together for us.
Randy for getting us through all these Zoom meetings. I'm sure you'll be happy to know that the next one's face to face. Yes. Yes, Your Worship, I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and it's 9.09 .09 p.m. and I'll declare this meeting adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. We'll see you in September. Good night, everybody.